6 o'clock news from the BBC with Nicholas Whittle and Philip Hayton. Good evening. The headlines at 6 o'clock. At least 36 people are now known to have died in a multiple train crash in South London. Two crowded commuter trains ran into each other in the rush hour. A third train ploughed into the wreckage. The rescue services helped hundreds to safety. Others had to wait while wreckage was cut away. More than 100 people were hurt. 32 of them are still in a serious condition. Pan Am 747 Jumbo Jet with 255 people on board has crashed just north of the Scottish border. Pan Am flight PA-103 took off from London Heathrow, bound for John F. Kennedy Airport in New York at 6.25 this evening. Radar contact was lost at 7.19. The plane came down in the town of Lockerbie in Dumfrieshire. It crashed into a petrol station and a number of houses. American embassies, foreign governments and Pan Am were all informed. The victims on the jumbo jet, 258 people died, most were Americans. At least 13 adults and four children from this small Scottish town are dead or unaccounted for. Every generation blames the one before And all of their frustration come beating on your door I know that I'm a hostage to all his hopes and fears I just wish I could have told him in the living years Oh, crumpled bits of paper Filled with imperfect thoughts Still to conversations I'm afraid that's all we've got You say you just don't see it He says it's perfect sense You just can't get agreement In this present tense We all talk a different language Talking in defense Say it loud Say it loud a point at Charlton though on a day when the goalkeepers were the stars Bob Polder McKnight won't be able to go as Charlton mount to charge in the second half Mackenzie number eight is the one to watch as the cross comes in 
Bernard just getting his fingertips up to the header. Nil nil. West Ham back on terms though with a goal right out of the Upton Park textbook. Glorious one-touch football, climaxing with Rosinha's strike. Now, before our film, we go back to the newsroom and Michael Burke. At least 30 people are now known to have died tonight when a British Midland Airways Boeing 737 with 126 people on board crashed on the M1 motorway. 70 have been pulled out alive. Some are still trapped. The plane came down on the motorway itself within sight of the airport runway lights, clipping the tops of trees before coming to rest beside the road.
he's in that spot up there. So is Dickens. And Adam Ford is in there. I think after Sunday's match, most people expected West Ham to get rolled over a bit here tonight, well, didn't they? I mean, what, what, where did the, the bookie? The bookie certainly did. He could have had seven to one about us today, I believe, but um, I didn't get on anyway. But um, where did these reserves of character come from? I mean, no, no Mark Ward, no Stuart Robson, no Tony Gale, Alvin Martin off injured. Yeah. It was a real battling performance. Yeah, I think uh, the match on Sunday uh, gave us a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, to, to go two goal, two goals ahead against Arsenal, we felt, well, there's no reason to fear them because we had them in trouble on Sunday. And uh, cup football, there's such an atmosphere, it doesn't you don't really sense which ground you're playing at. Mm. So that's the way it was today. And the longer the game went on, the more chance I felt we had. And, uh, well, I think the best team deserved to win, on football anyway. What about the goal? You played a part in the move at first. Alan Dickens helped it on. Were you surprised to see Leroy get in there? Yes, uh, Alan Dickens just played it over the top of Tony Adams, and I think about three Arsenal players hesitated, and Leroy took advantage and just nudged it, uh, you know, a, a neat little header in the far corner, and uh, Lukic couldn't do anything about it. And there was always going to be one goal tonight, because uh, there, wasn't many, many uh, there weren't many chances uh, created. And the goalkeepers didn't have many saves to make. But having said that, it was quite a good game. When you came off just before the end, were those last few minutes agonising for West Ham? Because the, the referee paid about five minutes of stoppage time. Well, I, I think we got more nervous when we scored, funnily enough. Uh, when we went 1-0 up, I, I think we, we began to tense up again, thinking, oh, it's only 15, 15 minutes left. Uh, when I went off, certainly, I was uh, screaming at the referee to blow up. <laughs> At the end there, you went to the West Ham supporters, having for so many years at the end of famous matches here, gone to the North Bank. Yeah. Did that seem a bit strange to you? Well, it did, in, in a way, but uh, the Arsenal supporters know that uh, my nine, ten years here, uh, you know, I'm not going to forget, but I'm playing for West Ham now. And I'm enjoying my football, and they understand that. Great night for Liam Brady and the Hammers. Out go many people's FA Cup favourites, and it's West Ham who go to Swindon in the next round. Every time I look into your loving eyes I see a love that money just can't buy One look from you I drift away I pray and so then the Irishman says... And you're having the chicken, sir. What? <laughs> chicken a la croix prepared at your table. Yes, thank you. Right, right. So, the Irishman says... Oh, my God! <laughs> what? Chicken a la croix. What are you doing? What am I doing? Yes. Well, well sir, I have to make sure the knife is properly sharp. <laughs> Anything you...